from this drawing. So, what we're doing is we're going to take a slight little detour from our uh, analog to digital lecture, and we're going to talk about how to read a schematic. How many of you already know how to read a schematic? I expect all the ET's hands to go up, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you just raised it when I said that, right? What voltage is this most likely? 3.3, that's a good start. What voltage is this very likely? Zero. Zero. Why in the heck would we put all of these capacitors between power and ground? All right, noise, noise suppression. These are what we call decoupling caps. On any electronic board, you're going to have these transient signals flying all over the place on the power rail and the ground rail. Rail meaning the ground line and the power line. And what these capacitors do is they help to dampen the spikes of these signals and variations on the, uh, on the two rails. Notice that we have this one, it is uh, 0.1 microfarad. We have one over here that's 10 microfarad, and another one that's 10 microfarad. By the way, the uh, 10 volt after that means the rating of it. Um, here's another one, here's another one. If we look all over, hey, here's a couple right here. That's interesting. Uh, look at a few more. Uh, you'll see them all over the place. They're all over the place for different types of, of, of decoupling, and usually you put one right next to each chip. So later on when we, uh, we look at some of the other chips, you'll see a decoupling cap right next to it. What does this look like right here? This thing that says SW1. Switch, right? And here's a pull-up resistor and a cap. And this thing over here that says RES. I think that stands for reset, right? And it has a uh, pound sign after that. What does that mean? Typically what that means is that means that signal is active low. So if you press this button, you're going to tie, you're going to have through this resistor, power tied directly to the capacitor. So that means that when you press this button, this signal right here will be zero volts. When you release the button, this cap will charge, and this will float up to 3.3 volts. Why would you think you have this capacitor here? To keep it from long time. To keep it from what? Long time. Yeah, to, to you give a fairly long time for you to bleed off this capacitor to bring it down to zero volts. Because you don't want a spike or something like that to cause you to reset. So we look at these. Uh, this is our main processor. Notice that it's being powered by 3.3 volts. A typical processor microcontroller chip will have multiple voltage inputs. And we have it right here. We will also have multiple ground inputs, which we have right down here, ESS. We also have the opportunity for multiple heartbeats for our chip. And does anybody see a heartbeat anywhere here? Yeah, these are crystal oscillators. Will allow you to, in this case, generate a 32.768 kilohertz signal this is typically a watch crystal, extremely accurate. Then you'll have this other one down here which says it's 12 megahertz. I thought it ran faster. But it has a, a circuit in here that will allow it to be multiplied to be a, a faster speed. Uh, these are typically what are called jumpers. These are typically what are called test points. Locations on your board that you can actually touch and be able to make measurements are called test points. 
Notice that there's a lot of signals here that are identified with, um, in red here, LED1, LED2, LED3, and it says 5, 7. This means after this that the, uh, uh, the signal LED1 is actually described on page 5 and page 7. And this is directly tied to PD0. That means it's port 0. Right? The answer is no. <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody to correct me. Oh, you can be bold. 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 Yeah, I'll this out. This is port D bit 0. Port D bit 7. In the same way, you go up here, here is port A bit 0. And in fact, if you look over here, here's port 4, port 3, port 2, port 1, port E, port 5, C, C, I got, uh, I got A, B, C, D, E, 1, 2, 3, some bits of 3 over here as well. Here's 5, there's port 0, that's way over there, I wonder where that is. Port 4, port 3, so it looks like on this processor, ports, uh, uh, 9, 8, 7 are kind of missing, right? And not every chip is going to have every single port because ports require a lot of pins to come out. Let's look at some of these other things that are coming out. Remember how I said that uh, um, we'll see analog signals, we'll say AN something or other. So do we see anything here that says AN? These are names here that are given to a specific port, and it can have multiple names, but it's still going to be referred to as pin 63 of our processor, audio output. This kind of looks like it's digital, right? And in fact, it is a digital line because we're going to drive our, our our frequencies or our other signals with digital signals, just zeros and ones. Do we see anything around here that says AN0 that might be our A to D converter? I think you're on the left side. Uh, left side of the top. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, it looks like port four, right? Interrupt request eight is one of the other things. Oh, look at this. It is hooked up to switch. That's interesting. Switch 1, switch 2, switch 3, AN3, 4, 5, 6, PWM, LPN. Okay. Do we have any more ANs anywhere else? We'll leave it at that for now. So this is the, this is the mothership of the entire sheet. So all of these little names over here are going to be referred to somewhere else. So let's go to the next page of the sheet. This is the Ethernet. I can tell because it says Ether. Physical. And so this is a specific chip that has a lot of things here tied to ground, a lot of things not connected. Some of these other devices over here that have, oh look, it has its own oscillator. There are some other things we have here. Oh, this is a connector to, uh, to a dog. It's connected to a beagle. This is, says header beagle, and this says J1. So it's actually going to be defining a, a connection to an external device that you could attach into it. What do we have over here? Oh, look at this. We have something that is a red LED. We have something that's a green LED. This is kind of
kind of associated with the Ethernet. Interesting. So let's go to page three. We have a whole bunch of test pins, some inductors. Oh, look. Anybody know what this is? It's a CAN bus interface. CAN bus is an automotive interface for uh, a bus that will go to all sorts of different devices, typically in an automotive uh, environment. Oh, look at this. It has a serial port connector as well. There we go. We'll get rid of that. So we have a... What happened to my serial port? Oh, it's on the third page, isn't it? There we go. Hey, this looks kind of like that connector on the side of it, right? And it goes straight to a chip. This chip will go to, at this point, it's two parts, or it's two lines in the, uh, uh, the processor, and a couple of other devices here, parts that are used for being able to communicate. As I said, this is the can, this is the CAN bus. Wi-Fi application header. Hmm. Again, this is a connector. So there's not a real part. Let's go to the next page. USB charge pump. That might have something to do with the power that we might be able to use on our device. Some more USB function circuits. I think we'll leave it at that because I don't want to get into that too much. Here is a page that shows a lot of connectors. A couple of switches. Graphical LCD shows you how you can connect up to the wonderful graphical LCD that you have. Hey, here's switch one, switch two, switch three. If you want to, you can actually disable these. And here is a, what is this? Is this a chip or a jumper? Hmm. I wonder what this is. What part on our board says micron? I'll look over that for a minute. This obviously is a speaker, and we're driving it with audio amplifiers. This is more. Uh, uh, analog circuitry, and look, here are our inputs. Remember those were, um, those were digital inputs. Down here, analog devices. What is that? It says microphone and circuit. By the way, did this uh, micron thing, did they say what that is? I think I know what that is, but I'm, I'm going to hold on for a second. U13. That's PCM serial clutch. Okay. That is, uh, that is a uh, serial communications interface. There's our potentiometer, which goes to AN4. Micro SD that shows what our interface will be for that. Peripheral reset buffer, some LED resistors, uh, our LEDs. Oh, look at that, we have a temperature sensor. Is our temperature sensor going to be analog in this case? Oh, look at this. I squared C. That means that our temperature sensor is very similar to the one I just showed you earlier. The temperature sensor is works with the I squared C serial communications interface. And I will know this by looking at this device and identifying that it says it is uh, SCL, SDA. We'll look at uh, this in chapter number uh, seven. But it's not a, a regular XY type of uh, 
or analog type of interface. What about this accelerometer? Hey, is this analog or is this digital? In this case, it's also digital. It's, you're also communicating with it with the I squared C port. And again, it's going to go on a bus that several devices can access at one time. And here it does say that it is an XYZ, so it has three degrees where it has measurement of three axes. The alternative to that would be, in the old school, an accelerometer. would have a, uh, a device like this, and it would give you, you would give it VCC, and it would have ground, and it would give you a single voltage for X, Y, and Z. And those voltages would be in the range of, VCC is the same as V ref plus, V ref minus. But in the case of these, accelerometers, what you'll see is even though, big fat hands, hold on, there we go, we're back, even though the voltage might be between 5 volts to 0 volts, in most cases, your range and the, the real voltage that you're looking at is between 2 to 3 volts. So going back here, And then there is a, uh, another assistance circuit. Remember how I mentioned the other day that there's actually another processor on your board? Here it is. It's serving as your debugger. So it has its own circuit. It has its own supporting uh, uh, devices that will allow you to communicate with it. And then in the end, oops. You have to put everything that you're going to build the board with on the board. So that includes rubber feet, fiducial. Actually, can I have somebody's board? Can you bring it up to me? For, uh, uh, for a trip to the prize closet, does anybody know what a fiducial is? Do you know what a fiducial is? Is that yes or no? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
right there, and then usually it's surrounded by a circle of copper as well. Um, and usually they're fairly big, but I don't see any on this board. Is that or my eyesight is just getting so bad and they're so small I can't see it? But they do that for the vision systems on the picket place machines. So they're able to identify and align how the board is when they're going to start to pick and place parts on that board. I'm not going to go into any further on that, but I do want to point out a couple of things on here. Number one, in the uh, design of this board, notice the following. This part right here, if you can see it carefully, see the lettering? And see the orientation of the lettering as such the words are going across this way. And then you look over at this part over here, and what the heck? The lettering is upside down. And then you look at some of the other parts, and the lettering is completely different. Now how come they're not being nice and they're, they're putting all the parts in the same orientation? So that when you look at the board, all the lettering goes in the way it should be, which is across, right? Alright? So the answer is routing. When they are routing a signal from one place to another, sometimes it makes sense to rotate that chip 90 degrees because these connections here are going over to this side of the board. These connections here are going down, so it would make lots of sense to have them close to the parts where, where they're oriented and going. You do have some indication of where is, where is pin number one. So in this case, you notice that this has a little round circle right here, which typically says, oops, which typically says that that is uh, part, or uh, that is um, pin one, usually counts down and comes back up, right? Back here's, here's an example of that right here. Here's pin one. Obviously, that's two, three, four, five. Actually, no, I think it's back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And they have that listed on there. If you look at this pin right, uh, I'm trying to think some other pins have labeled. Oh, here, this one over here. It actually starts counting pin one here. Pin one here goes all the way around to pin 100. By the way, is this, uh, we talked about packaging earlier, right? Did, was it this class or robotics? Am I mistaken myself? Did I go over packaging for this class? No. Oh my gosh. I am really losing my mind. This is a type of technology which is called a, uh, uh, a quad flat pack because all the connections are towards the outside. This is a dual flat pack because it only has it on two sides. How do you know if something is a dip or a dual inline package? It will have legs that will need to be soldered from the bottom, right? So do we see anything here that's soldered from the bottom? You know, This actually turned out to be a connector soldered from the bottom. Oh, here, Ethernet. This is soldered from the bottom, right? Oh, but wait, it's just a completely different type of connector. There's not very many actual executable chips that are soldered from the bottom. Oh, here's one right here, right in the middle. Let's see, what is that? Oh, that's just a set of jumpers. So you notice that nearly every single executable chip on here is a, is a surface mount. And in fact, they're using, in this case, this, uh, this Ethernet, they're using these pins down here as uh, uh, mechanical connections as well. Oops, this one right here. As mechanical connections as well. And that's why they go through. So, you know what? I hardly finished any of my analog. So, what I will do is I will go into uh, more detail about this in our next class. 